The outside vent position is one of the most difficult firefighting assignments on the job. It is usually given to an experienced firefighter due to the variety of difficult tasks that must be successfully performed based on his knowledge and good judgment. What this tape will try to do is clarify the OV's responsibilities in some of the many different types of buildings we have here in New York City. What does the outside vent man do? Basically, your objective is to position yourself opposite the advancing hose line for venting, entry, and search. You vent so that expanding gases and steam pushed ahead by the nozzle can be released. If possible, you enter to conduct a search. In many instances, by being opposite the advancing hose line, you will find yourself encountering victims trying to exit because their primary means of escape has been cut off. Three important factors we cannot stress enough are size up, communication, and safety. As with all positions, fire strategy starts with size up. And size up begins with the receipt of the alarm and the specific information you receive. Size up will tell you where and how you are going to operate. Communication, so you can share your information while you monitor changing conditions around you. And safety, because if you are hurt in this dangerous and often isolated position, you will not be able to complete your duties and may even become an additional problem. At all times, you're expected to wear full turnout gear and use your mask. There are two fire situations that every firefighter should readily be able to recognize, the backdraft and the flashover. For the outside vent man, it is imperative that he know the warning signs. Failing to can cost him his life. In a flashover, intense heat at ceiling level radiates back down and ignites the whole room at once. Here's a room that you might consider crawling into for a quick search. Yet in a matter of seconds, it will suddenly become unlivable. Always be aware of the amount of heat above you. Use an ungloved hand to monitor conditions as you move deeper into a room to conduct a search. This may be the only way you can identify that a flashover is about to occur. Also look for small flashes of fire amid the rolling smoke at doorways or ceiling level. And remember that ceiling levels will vary, especially in commercial occupancies. Sometimes, but not always, this visual tip-off will show the room is about to light up. But many times there is little or no warning from members, as in this fire in Brooklyn. Backdraft is a condition that is somewhat easier to identify, but equally lethal. Look for a tightly sealed building with smoke pushing out of cracks under pressure and then being sucked back into the building. Doors and glass are hot, but there is no sign of visible fire. Anytime air is sucked into a tight building that has just been vented and contains a fire, you have backdraft potential and vertical ventilation is called for. In order to learn the basics of the outside vent position, we decided to travel around the city and speak to some members who were experienced outside vent men. I'm here in Manhattan with firefighter Bill Bresden. Bill has had a lot of experience fighting fires in non-fireproof multiple dwellings. He's going to share some of that experience with us today. John. Bill? All right, Bill, let's get right to it. You're the outside vent man. You roll into the box. This is the building you're faced with. What goes through your mind? What do you do? Well, John, the first job is going to be to help the chauffeur position and set up the rig. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm also in my size up of the fire building. Here I see a five-story old law tenement with nothing showing in the front, but this doesn't mean much. We could have a heavy fire in the rear or a fire in the front apartment that has yet to start showing. This is becoming more common lately with the introduction of the thermopane window. They hold in heat and smoke far better than the older windows. But I see no evidence of fire in the front, so I have to get to the rear. If this were a new law tenement, 
I would look for the stair to the tunnel in front of the building, or else I would enter and use the door that's usually under the stairway. You must, however, be prepared to encounter obstacles since many times these routes to the courtyard are locked or chained closed. Both ways would bring me to the center courtyard or alleyway where I could get to the rear and check for fire. Since this is an old law tenement, backyard access is tougher. Many times these buildings are connected along the whole block, so to get to the rear, I'll enter the fire building and get into the first rear apartment below the fire that I can find or force. Oh! Fire department! The fire department! I gotta get to the fire escape! So please open What's the matter? We got a fire in the upper floor. I gotta get to the fire escape. Please. Really? Right. Oh, God, yeah! You'll almost yeah. always find a gate on this window. If it's a fire department approved gate, it'll open like this. If not, then immediately tell a tenant to get the key. I then go to the rear fire escape through this apartment. And if civilians need to be removed, I direct them back through here. It's a lot safer than taking them down the drop ladder. Now I'm on the rear fire escape and can survey the back of the building and give my report to the officer. Now let's assume you have a fire in the fourth floor rear apartment. What's your next move? Well, after I give my report to the officer, I'm gonna make my way up the fire escape, and I'll be listening to the radio to monitor radio traffic on the roof, the street, and uh, especially the engine. I wanna know when the engine officer calls for water, and then I'll have an idea when to vent the windows to the fire apartment. The first window I'm going to vent is the one off of the fire escape. I'll make sure that I break out as much glass as I can and tear off any curtains or shades. Then I move to the window on the fire escape. Since I'll be entering this window, I must open it the right way. The best way to remove and trim these new windows is to break out both the top and bottom panes first and then unlock the window and open it. Once open, the window is weaker and now should be attacked at each corner. Work on one frame first and then the other. And when they are out, you have a nice clean path into the apartment. Then enter feet first and make sure you feel for a floor when you go in. Bill, are there any notifications that you should make? Well, in this situation, I'd call my officer, let him know I'm going into the fourth floor rear apartment. If I can't reach him, I'll notify the chauffeur. Uh, and then when I come out from making the search, I'll call him again and let him know I'm out of the fire building. How do you know when to enter an apartment and search and when not to? Well, John, it's really a judgment call. Uh, if the heat's not that intense or the fire is in another room, uh, I'll, I'll take out the window, including the cross member, and attempt to make a search. Uh, this is a calculated risk because, as you know, venting for life is going to draw the fire towards you. When I enter, I'm going to go feet first so I can feel for, for a floor. And uh, also, if something goes wrong, I'll be able to get out quicker. You really must remember to be careful. You're operating outside and exposed. Speaking of exposed, what about endangering people above you on the fire escape when you're venting windows below? Well, that's a good point, John. You have to look and see what's going on above you. You might have civilians coming down the fire escape. Uh, the second duo V might be going above you. Uh, the roof man might even be descending from his position. You do not vent windows indiscriminately on the fire escape. If there's a chance of fire getting out the window and turning the fire escape into a barbecue. Bill, what do you do if you find a victim? Well, first you get on the radio and give a 1045. You let your officer know where you are and if you need help. And then you get that victim to a safe environment and begin CPR or whatever first aid is necessary. So you mentioned before about the new thermopane windows. Can you tell us a little about how these windows are affecting our operations? Well, energy efficient windows make a very tight seal. 
so they hold the heat and smoke in. And for this reason, we try to vent as quickly as possible since the life hazard due to smoke is greatly increased uh, in buildings with this type of window. And uh, early venting also reduces the chance of backdraft or flashover. Yeah. There are a lot of reports around about smoke and heat problems on the floors above the fire, especially the top floor, in buildings with these type of windows. Just remember, energy efficient windows can be difficult to break and trim out. When venting from above, you need a good tool setup to be effective. Many companies are now using halogens with chain links welded to them. Then the members simply carry a utility rope with a quick connect snap hook. All right, Bill, thanks very much for your time and for sharing your knowledge with us. You're quite welcome, John. It's my pleasure. Stay safe. The OV's position and tools will vary depending upon where the fire is located. For a store fire in these non-fireproof multiple dwellings, your tool assignment would be the hook and halligan. This particular position is very challenging since store owners may use the rear of the store as living quarters. After the OVM lowers the rear fire escape drop ladder, he must VES the rear of the store. If an exterior door is found, then a mall should be considered because these exterior doors are usually heavily secured. Here we see the rear of the buildings that you've just looked at. Typically, problems abound. Notice, no drop ladder. Steel roll-down doors. Steel doors. Bars on the windows. Cemented up windows. No rear fire escape at all. How would you handle these obstacles at 4 o'clock in the morning? At top floor tenement fires, the first two outside vent formally went to the roof, but no more. The first outside vent now operates at a top floor fire the same as any other fire, and it is the duty of the second due outside vent man to bring the sewer to the roof and assist the roof man. At row frames and brownstones, however, the first two OV still is responsible to get the sewer to the roof at a top floor fire and operate with the roof man. With a tenement, if the fire is in the front of the building with no front fire escape, no obvious victims, and the apparatus is an aerial ladder, the outside vent will go to the rear and the chauffeur will operate and vent the fire apartment. If the fire is in the front and the OV is in a tower ladder, he will release the fire escape drop ladder first then ascend via the bucket to conduct his VES in the fire apartment. The second OVM must be aware of this so that he can go directly to the rear of the building, making sure that this critical area is not left uncovered. In this section on fireproof multiple dwellings, we'll be speaking with decorated firefighter Dave Geddens of Ladder Company 155. We're here at this building and we'd like Dave to take us through the standard operating procedure for the outside vent man at this fireproof multiple dwelling and other buildings of this type. We'd like you to walk us through this fire scenario as if you were the outside vent of the first due truck company. Sure, John, I'd be happy to. First of all, at a fire of this type, my most important thing is my size up. At any fire that is within reach of the ladder, I would act in conjunction with the chauffeur to ladder the building. Then go to the ladder to vent, enter, and search. I would also note the type of windows in the building as to whether they are the conventional or the thermopane type. This bears on the degree of difficulty in venting, and it also plays an important factor in the conditions inside the apartment. What if we have a fire on an upper floor that's not within reach of the ladder? It would be impossible to vent from the outside. If this were not obvious upon arrival, I would inform my officer of the possible delay in venting the fire floor. Then taking the forcible entry tools, I myself like to take them all. I would proceed in the elevator, getting off one or two floors below the fire apartment. Here, I would communicate to my officer, telling him the staircase I am using to get to the apartment above the fire. If in doubt on the location of the fire apartment, you can stop at the fire floor to confirm the location of the fire. At the floor above, I will team up with the roof man to force entry if needed. I cannot emphasize enough how important wind conditions and venting affect the fire in a fireproof multiple dwelling. This is especially true when you are working on the upper floors. 
When you vent the window 30 floors up on a windy day, you can turn a five cent mattress fire into a fully involved apartment fire in a matter of seconds. Fire department. Fire Making There's sure fire that the apartment door is secured window. open, right. we'll Just find the window above the fire. If there is a child guard in place, I'll force it out. Open the window, look for trapped occupants, and feel for the effects of the wind. Any adverse wind effects will be the same as in the fire apartment. and should be relayed to your officer before any windows are vented. The method of venting will vary with the type of window. Choose your tool set up accordingly. In the truck, we always like to think that when we vent, we make things easier for the brothers on the inside. But we don't realize that sometimes careless venting in these multiple dwellings can burn and kill firefighters moving in below. Dave, what are the procedures for second do outside vent at a fireproof multiple dwelling? I would be monitoring my handy talkie while responding and be aware of the location of the fire. If the fire is above the reach of the ladder, I would assist the first do OV at the floor above the fire. If ladders can reach the fire floor, I'll vent from the outside and assist the first do OVM. Suppose this were a compact of fire. Well, as the OVM, I'm going to go with the engine. The reason for this is I have my hook and I can use the hook to dislodge anything stuck in the compactor chute. Okay. Dave, thanks very much for your time. My pleasure. Here's a tip on casement windows. The two best methods of forcing entry are, one, with an axe or a heavy blow from a halligan, attack the sash where it meets the frame. These spots are welded and are the weakest link. Once broken, bend or break the sash and clear out the rest of the glass. Or two, break the center pane, reach in and release the lock handle, then break out the bottom pane, reach in and crank the window out. But remember, either way will still only provide a small space to climb in or out. I'm standing in front of a row of typical brownstones with firefighter Rod Jones of Ladder Company 1-4. Rod has had a lot of experience as an outside vent man fighting fires in both row frames and brownstones. How you doing, Rod? All right, John. Okay. Tell me, what would your initial operation be at a fire in, say, this building? Being the OVMN, my position would be in the rear, unless a front rescue is required. I would take a hook and an axe, or if I'm in an area with gated windows, I would take a halligan and a hook. Let's assume you have an upper floor fire. During my size up, I see a second floor fire, and I've determined no ladder rescue is required. So I would use the ground floor in the fire building to get to the rear. It can be tough getting a 10 foot hook to the rear of a brownstone. One easy way is to put it in the ground floor window, then pull it through when you're inside and straight out the back. In most brownstones and row frames, the basement has a rear door which opens into the backyard. If there's no fire escape, I would vent what I could using the 10-foot hook, relay any information, and then return to the front to team up with the chauffeur. How would you get to the rear if it were a lower floor fire? With a lower floor fire, my route to the rear may be through the adjoining building. In most brownstones and row frames, there are walls and fences between the yards, so be prepared to face this when you get back there. Look out for dogs whenever you get to the rear of these buildings. If there was a fire escape in the rear, I would vent the windows off the fire escape first. Then I would vent the fire escape windows, and then I would go in and make my search. Rod, what do you do when you get to the rear and you find you've got somebody trapped? If I found someone was trapped in the rear, First, I would get on the radio and notify my officer, the chauffeur, and the roof man that someone's trapped in the rear. Then I would come back and reassure the victim that help is on the way. What if the victim is within reach of a portable ladder? If it's feasible that I can quickly get the portable ladder back here, that's what I will do. The best way I know to get a portable ladder into the rear yard is butt first through the parlor floor window. Then I'd carry it through the apartment and out the rear window, butt first, again. If that option doesn't look good, my job now is to get to the roof and assist with the rescue. I would go through the building, up the aerial, and assist the roof man. Hmm. What about the OV in a tower ladder operation? Many times, the OV in a tower ladder, first two, will be in the bucket in front of the building, venting. 
If the first duo V is in the bucket venting, it's imperative that the second duo V gets to the rear of the building. Rod, while we're on the topic of towel ladders, what are some of the unique things that an OV should be aware of when he has to operate in a towel ladder? Well, first and most important is to make sure all the brothers are clear from the towel ladder stream. Next, beware of pushing fire, especially in the cock loft of row frames. These common cock lofts can extend for a block. And lastly, keep your eyes open. You're in the best place to see the fire change or to see someone trapped or in trouble. I see. Will the first or second do have a different assignment at a top floor fire? Yes. In a brownstone, the OV would take the saw to the roof via the aerial or the bucket if he is first or second do. Vent those top floor rear windows, but beware of ice in the winter. There are no parapets in the rear, so if you start to slide, the roof slopes to the rear and you're gone. At a row frame, first do OV reports to the roof with the saw and an axe. Second do OV, other than searching for life, would operate in the exposures by pulling ceilings on the top floor to check for extension. He'd report the conditions back to the officer in charge. If the fire is in the cock loft, then the second duo V goes to the roof to help with the venting. Rod, can you think of anything else that you'd like to add? Yes. The OV is a very dangerous position, and there are many things to look out for. Electrified windows, steel plates on the roof, steel plates on the windows, loose fire escape steps, loose goosenecks, greased goosenecks, hypodermic needles, and always be aware of dogs. Also remember, always identify yourself. Members have been shot through windows by people thinking they were burglars. All right, thanks a lot, Rod. Thanks for your time. Glad. The city of New York is not all concrete and brick. Throughout the boroughs, there are thousands of one and two family homes that also depend on us for their fire protection. I'm here in Queens today with firefighter Bob Fash, Ladder Company 137. How you doing, Bob? Okay, John. Bob, can you tell us how you operate as the outside vent when you have to respond to a private dwelling such as this? Sure thing, John. As soon as I hear a run coming in, I try and get as much information as possible from the ticket. I also start to monitor the handy talkie while I'm route, especially if we are second there. You can pick up a lot of useful information listening to the units that are already on the scene. Because we can't use the aerial ad due to this tree, my operation at this private dwelling will be to team up with the chauffeur. We will ladder the rear and the side of the building using a 25-foot portable ladder. My tool assignment will be a 6-foot hook, an axe, and a 25-foot portable ladder. Axes can be tough to, at some of these private dwellings due to fences, dogs, trees, you name it. Another thing to remember is that you have overhead power coming in and you're running around at night with a 25-foot ladder on wet grass. You must keep your wits about you. It is important to note that the chauffeur and myself as an OVM men operate as a team during an entire fire attack. When we use the portable ladders, we take turns. First, I'll butt the ladder while the chauffeur performs VES. Then we'll reposition the ladder to another window and switch positions. How do you know where to start your search? Well, I'll start upstairs since that's where the bedrooms are. And I always look for top finder stickers on the windows. These are very prevalent in areas of private houses. If I see a sticker, that's the first room I go to search. When I get in the room, I'll try to close the bedroom door first to keep smoke and heat out. Then I'll conduct my search. When the search is over, I'll reopen the bedroom door and vent the interior. Proper ladder placement is also important at private dwelling windows. This ladder would be in position equal to and adjacent to the top of the selected window. Well, that works good for venting. What about when you have to remove a victim? When a rescue attempt is made, the butt man must first call for help, then position the ladder under the window at sill level. I would find a natural butt before ascending the ladder if help hasn't arrived yet. 
what if you're in an aerial or a towel ladder and you have clear access to the front of the building? Well, then the chauffeur and the OV man will still act as a team. But now our area of responsibility will be the front of the house and the roof man will operate in the rear and on the sides. For example, when an aerial ladder can be used to ladder the front of the building. After assisting the chauffeur in positioning the ladder, I would ascend the ladder for VES. There's another change in our point of operations. If using a tower ladder, with its flexibility, I can get the front and the sides. This way, my position is in the bucket, performing VES. Bob, what about a Queen Anne? What should an OV be looking for that's different? In most private dwellings, the second ladder gets the job of cutting the roof. At Queen Anne's, however, if the first two officer decides the roof should be open, then it is up to the OVM and the chauffeur to do it. If we have a tower ladder, then we will cut the main gable with a saw from the bucket. If your rig is an aerial, then you are going to need a good axe and you straddle the peak and chop parallel to the ridge pole. Oh yeah, and remember to bring a 10-foot hook to push down the ceiling. Bob, thanks very much. A lot of good information for the members. Sure, John, anytime. Here's a good tip on energy efficient windows. They can now be found in almost any type of building, and when you're venting from the inside, there is an easy way. First slide the top down to open the window. Then get a chair to rest the window on. After that, simply find the clips in the corners at the top of each sash, pull them in, and drop the windows down. You're left with a larger opening, no damage, and this works with most energy efficient windows. As we've seen, the position of outside vent covers a wide variety of tasks and tactics. In many cases, you'll be required to team up with others to execute your duties. What do I do? Am I with the roof man, the chauffeur, the engine? What do I operate alone? Each response and each operation mandates a different course of action. You must know what you have to do from the moment you arrive at the box and then have the skills and ability to do it. The one thing that each of the OV men I spoke with around the city all agreed on was that they were always learning new ways to best cover this position. This tape only touches on some of the general aspects of the OV. Take some time and read the material that pertains to it. Speak to the senior men in your company. It's the position that can turn you into a hero or a victim, depending on how you cover it. Take some time and learn about it now, because when you roll out the door, it's too late to start asking questions. All officers and firefighters are reminded to review Chapter 9 of the Communications Manual. That chapter, Company Unit Communications, contains important operational and safety information relevant to the OVM assignment.